Um, there's one subject which uh, comes up occasionally in films, uh, but also I hear it from uh, reenactors uh, uh, and other people who use uh, swords or sword-like objects um, that annoys me, and I want to I want to address it. And that is the idea that if a sword balances closer to your hand, then that's better. Okay. Well, first of all, with balance of a sword. Um, pretty much any sword that is a real sword and not a sort of stage combat weapon or a modern fencing weapon or something like that, any sword that's designed to either thrust or cut or cut and thrust will balance at some point in front of the hand. That is, the point of balance will be somewhere in the blade in front of the guard. Okay? Now, so you can see this sword, uh, this is a basket hilted Tudor style, um, uh, English style back sword. And this balance is about, what, that's about two and a half inches, three inches in front of the guard. Um, that is fairly close balance to the, to the grip, okay? Cutting, cut and thrust swords, cutting swords tend to not balance any closer than about three inches from the guard, okay? Um, most military sabers, uh, if I grab one, <coughs> Here, most military sabers balance about seven or six, six to eight inches, shall we say, on average, uh, from the guard. So this, this is balancing about six inches from the guard. Um, generally speaking, infantry officers' uh, sabers balance about that, about six inches from the guard, five or six inches from the guard. And cavalry um, swords tend to balance a little bit further out because they've got slightly longer blades, slightly heavier blades, and they're for a slightly different type of use, mostly from horseback, of course, whereas the infantry officer's sword's mostly for fighting on foot. Um, so, um, cut and thrust swords tend to balance this sort of range of um, points in front of the guard. The medieval sword, again, we're looking at about four inches in front of the guard there. Okay, so this is a very common range for uh, cut and thrust swords to balance. Um, but uh, one popular film, uh, I don't like mentioning specific films because I'm not really making a, a channel to talk about films specifically, but Pirates of the Caribbean, um, the very first film, um, I remember that there's a, a sword, it's a sort of spadroon type sword, and Orlando Bloom shows off what an amazing balance it has because it balances at the guard. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, but why? Why would you want a, a sword to balance at the guard? Um, the only possible reason you might want it to balance that close to the hand is if it's only a thrusting weapon, okay? And it is true to say that some rapiers, for example, rapiers and small swords, some of them balance very, very close to the guard. Perhaps some small swords balance on the guard. I've never seen any that do. Uh, most that I've seen actually balance about uh, two inches up from the cross. But definitely a thrusting sword that you want lots of maneuverability in the point is going to balance closer to the hand. But what you sacrifice by adding that nimbleness in the point and bringing the point of balance back towards the hand is you sacrifice cutting power and the ability to, to give um, some force in the cut. Um, and this sword in, uh, in um, Pirates of the Caribbean is not a purely thrusting sword. And in fact, Orlando Bloom later shows it using, using it mostly to cut with, actually. So it would be an awful cutting sword. If you sharpen that sword up, if it, did if it did indeed balance at the cross, and you sharpen it up, it would be a pretty crap cutting sword. Um, so really, that's the point I want to make. Um, balance points on a, on a sword, you have different balance points for different purposes. Um, I showed in a different video the, the Indian Tulwa. Amazing cutting sword. It balances very far from the, from the hand, from the hilt. Okay, and that is because you're dedicating all of that force and inertia into the cut. That's what you want, so you move the point of balance up. And clearly an axe is a very good cutting object for cutting down trees, and the point of balance is somewhere up near the head end, it's somewhere up, up here, it's not near your hand at all. Um, so generally speaking, you add more cutting power the more you put the point of balance up, but you sacrifice maneuverability and speed in the point, or nimbleness of parrying and reposting, you know, so it's a balance. So you have different balance points for different things and there is no best point of balance. Okay? Thank you.